Mr Taggart. Thank you very much indeed, Mr Deputy Speaker. Um, when I first spoke in this House in my maiden speech, I spoke about the human right to read because it seemed to me that access to the printed word ought to be treated as a human right. And one of the very interesting things about the debate about the internet is that we're grow having a growing recognition that in exactly the same way, because it gives access to information, we should, we should treat the right to access to the internet like a human right. That if we uh, recognise it in that way, then we will actually create a better, more equal, more informed, more educated, better connected society. Um, and I represent a town which generates a huge amount of wealth in the creative industries, and I am very concerned to ensure that creative individuals are properly uh, rewarded for their talent, for their contribution. And when the Secretary of State spoke, he referred to the growth of the creative industries in the UK compared to other countries over the last decade. And I was very proud to act as PPS for the sec first ever Secretary of State for Culture, Media and Sport in Britain, who I believe played a critical role in recognising the strength uh, of uh, the creative industries. But I think we're about to make a mistake. And I think we're about to make a mistake not because of malafides or bad uh, uh, faith uh, from a government or probably for the opposition ben benches, but we're about to make a mistake in exactly the way that Parliament often makes its busy biggest mistakes, which is when all parties agree. Because when they all agree, what happens is we take shortcuts and we make mistakes for good reasons, and this good reason is to protect creative professionals. We make mistakes in the way that we do it, and we end up with bad laws. And many of us can quote examples of bad laws which have been achieved in this end, um, sometimes bad in their execution, the Dangerous Dogs Act is frequently referred, sometimes bad because we keep trying to get it right and still don't seem to get it right, even though it's absolutely right in theory, such as um, fathers paying properly for their children. I don't know why I still have so many cases turning up at my uh, advice surgery, but I know that I'm not alone in that regard. And it seems to me that the sections of this bill which are designed to uh, protect copyright from the internet, to prevent file sharing and so on, are hugely at risk of going down that road. Now, I was rather entertained by the uh, comments of the Honourable Member for Bath, who'd at one point uh, drafted an amendment and then within not very many hours was campaigning against said amendment. And I thought it illustrated this point so well because it was exactly in order he was trying to deal with what he saw as a wrong. It turned out that it wasn't very popular within his party and it didn't do exactly what he wanted to do, so he tried to amend it again. That is what a committee stage of a bill is for. And, and I am deeply concerned that what we are about... He might agree, but he is going to be part of the front bench conspiracy to end us up with this bill unamended and without the kind of scrutiny that we need. And frankly, this Parliament has shown itself to be utterly feeble in so many ways that we really shouldn't end up in our dying days continuing to be utterly feeble. I'll give way to the Honourable Gentleman, although he didn't give way to me. Ooh. I, I did, did give way on numerous occasions. I'm therefore particularly grateful to the Honourable Lady for giving way. Can I make it absolutely clear that if Clause 18 remains in the bill, we will vote against it at third reading. I don't think anything could be clearer than that. I think the Honourable Gentleman has an advantage over me, as does British Telecom, because he and they have seen a new version of this clause. Yes. And let me tell you, I have been to the vote office and I am not aware of what this new version of this clause says. And I speak within hours of the committee stage of this bill as a backbent parliamentarian, as a par parliamentarian, unable to see the new version of this clause. So I don't know what we are going to be proposed with. He might well know, but I am unaware. And I went 
as is the usual way for the backbench, to go to the vote office and ask for a copy of it. I spent quite a long time standing beside it. No, there is a reason why the vote office can't provide it to me. And it's simple. It is that we haven't yet had the second reading of this bill, and the vote office do not provide amendments to the bill before second readings. And what we're having right now is actually a debate which is closer to the kind of debate that you would expect to have in a committee. People are focusing on little bits of this bill. They're say, talking about potential amendments and so on. They're not actually talking about the principles, because interestingly, there is a pretty shared view with some tensions within it, but there's a pretty shared view that there are principles that we need to address. I found myself scarily, for the second time in two weeks, strongly agreeing, agreeing with the Honourable Member for Wokingham, not a man who I have frequently agreed with. But his point, it seems to me, which is that sharing actually can sometimes enhance understanding and knowledge. I discovered the work of Christopher Brookmeyer because Waterstones published some free chapters mm. of books and I read a chapter of Christopher Bookman's books and I bought all his books. Oh, damn, yeah. And that isn't unusual. I'm oh. completely unaware of Ashes to Ashes and Gene Hunt, so that when I saw this advertisement that everyone was going on about, I actually had no idea why it was clever, because I'd never watched this programme. But actually, one of the things about shared intellectual property is it can actually create a market for that property. And one of the things that I am frightened about, about the way that we're addressing this in this bill, is that we're not being subtle enough. We're not actually creating the opportunities which can make the most of the building the opportunities in the internet and make the least of commercial exploitation. Because as I understand copyright law, the pace where it bites isn't where someone copies a chapter of a book for their own interest or borrows a book from a friend. The place where it bites is when someone tries to make a profit out of somebody else's intellectual property. And that's traditionally been where copyright law bites. What I am anxious about the approach in this part of this bill is that there will be mums up and down the country running micro-businesses based on the internet. I will book you a nanny, I will find you a cleaner, or something like that, whose sons are illegally file-sharing and who end up having their businesses closed down because of it. It's those kinds of risky risks of consequences that the parliamentary scrutiny process is designed to avoid. And I will stand here and predict that unless we properly scrutinise this, there will be such businesses up and down the country closed down because of this. And the Honourable Gentleman, the Member for Bath, has said, is it all right if it's a special super uh, scrutiny system which can, you know, has to be amended and so on? I haven't seen one of this. I think we should do more things by secondary legislation. But he and I have both sat in those committees, and they are not places where scrutiny happens. They are another example of, frankly, pathetic oversight by Parliament. And I said earlier that I think this Parliament has let itself down. If we allow this bill to go through in this way, with a second reading after the election has been called, we are actually demonstrating that the public are right to think that we're pretty pointless. We are actually demonstrating that we don't have the courage of our convictions, and every single member of this House is demonstrating it. Every single member of this House who argued for parliamentary reform, and I see some of them here, including the Honourable Member for Bath, is actually shaming themselves. If they consent to this process, however important this bill is, it would be just as easy for a new government to say, we will put in place these building blocks if they are so essential. It is just not acceptable for the opposition front bench to say, whoops, if it doesn't work, we'll come back with something a month later. It's actually saying, we're not prepared to do our job. And I have to say, I am prepared to do my job. I do not believe that this is the right way to proceed. And I cannot find it in me, 
unless the honourable gentleman, the minister, in his summing up speech, says something utterly compelling about how these parts of this bill will be dealt with, I cannot find it in me to support it. Neil Gerrard.